Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bones Live, and welcome to another edition of Blogger's Corner with Brit. So without further ado... And now it's time for another episode of Blogger's Corner with Brit. Welcome back to the show, Brit. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing really good. How about you? Very well, thank you. So um, first thing I want to start off with is Errol, because uh, it was a really good episode the other night. And uh, I thought it was uh, exceptionally cool that they introduced a new hero into the fold and kind of didn't give you too much about it. I mean, I have an idea who it's supposed to be, but uh, it was uh, kind of interesting that way. And the fact that now that uh, both uh, Laurel and her father are both back on Arrow's side. <laughs> yes. So it was very interesting. And I have a feeling, I mean, from what I know, the new character is supposed to be Canary. And she looks like she's got to be from the island, the way she was handling herself. <laughs> I mean, she definitely seems to have the skills. So it was interesting interesting to me because the whole deal of uh, kind of the... Well, no, actually, completely wrong word, so I'll skip that one. So pretty much having that uh, killer escape, and then then now he's not in charge anymore. Now he's a detective. Uh, sorry, not even detective. He's a, he's a beat cop, and... Yeah, it goes back in the trail, and it just, like, the, the climactic ending was just fantastic with both of them together. I mean, like, what worse feeling than not only having your your, uh, your son or daughter, like, possibly die, but right in front of you, too. Yes, in such a, such a sick way as well. I mean, obviously, it's terrible no matter how, but it was very, um, it was very graphic. <laughs> well, to say the least, what were your thoughts on it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that episode was wonderful. I thought it was uh, definitely uh, picked up uh, really well, and there was that big cliffhanger from the previous episode, and I thought I explained it pretty well. And I'm excited about this Black Canary character. Um, I really like the actress. I saw her um, in an independent film a while ago called The Pact, and I'm excited to see her get to do a little bit more. She's definitely got a lot of talent, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that all shapes up. You know, one thing I liked about uh, this episode in general as well is they had more than one thing going on but it was they were able to kind of keep tabs on the entire time so you didn't get lost in one and then forget about the other oh that's a very good point yes they definitely kept everything very balanced and felicity was once again on the she was very funny and bringing a lot of the charm and zest to the show well just being the decoy was funny next time i don't want to do this i don't want to do this <laughs> <laughs> yes she it, she is so funny. In a lot of ways, I think her character is kind of overshadowing the Laurel character quite a bit. So it's going to be interesting to see how they try to, you know, balance both of those characters. Well, yeah, because now it looks like they're going to focus on Laurel a bit more now because she finally realizes, like, you know, it was her fault that <laughs> that that the boyfriend died. I mean, not to be so blunt and uh, <laughs> mean about it, but that's pretty much the way it came down. Yes, I was very happy that she finally came to that realization because I was very much sick of her whining and trying to pawn it off on other people and the only person who was responsible was Laurel. Well, that's right. And like, all of her tours to the glades. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's, it's sad because the Laurel character is just kind of, they're struggling to really find a, a medium with her character. One at one episode, she's this really tough, hard-nosed person, and then she's this really kindly, warm-hearted person. It's kind of, they need to make up their mind which way to go. I, I'm a big fan of the actress who plays her, Katie Cassidy, but here she seems a little bit, is, she seems as confused by what she's supposed to be doing as I am about what she's supposed to be doing. <laughs> well, that's one way to put it for sure. And no, I totally agree. <clears throat> That it's it's annoying when the character flip flops all the time. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating. It's like, and see, that's the only thing that's kind of like like I love the new Agents of Shield, but that's the only thing that's bothering me is this rogue character they picked up, and she's kind of going both ways. Like, oh man, really? <laughs> yeah, they need to have a definitive narrative for these characters. It, it, there should be um, what they call it with the writers and everything. They call it a character bible where they have everything kind of written out about the way they're supposed to be. And it seems like some of these shows have kind of thrown the Bible out of the window and are just kind of making it up as they go along. You know, and some of the shows you can actually almost see that, you know, like 
there's some good ideas behind some of these shows, but doesn't actually necessarily mean they're going to be good. I mean, the idea is only as good as the writer is, right? So. Absolutely. I'm seeing a lot of shows falter this season in terms of keeping that fluidity from previous seasons. It seems that they're trying to reinvent the show to keep energy, so then they're completely contradicting earlier characterizations, and it's getting very frustrating. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, <laughs> we could go on about that forever, so... <laughs> and we're going to get on to uh, the Tomorrow People, which is, uh, I always saw the first episode. I know you've seen the past two, but I've only seen the first one. But uh, a good idea, pretty much the quick rundown for those of you who haven't seen it, is, uh, again, it's uh, the kind of uh, shy, not necessarily nerdy kind of guy. It was like, you know, uh, brought by his family. He doesn't, doesn't know where his father is anymore. And he's been going to a psychiatrist because he thinks he's, well, his parents, well, his mom thinks he's got issues. And it turns out these are like, future people that have been coming in contact with him because he's part of them. So yes. very, very interesting concept. And the first episode was really cool because it kind of just gives you like the basic idea of what's going on. I mean, they didn't give away too much, but enough to kind of leave behind the next episode. So pretty much she now believes as far as alive and it's only from the first episode from what I've seen. And he's kind of resisting the new people a little bit, but he's kind of slowly kind of coming into it. So uh, the, the last uh, two episodes, Britt, uh, did they describe more? Did he learn more about his father? Or Well, he's learning a little, very little, but we're getting there about the mystery of his father. And the last two, the second episode focused on the agency of his uncle was trying to get this kid that was do, has the same powers as he does, and then the Tomorrow People are the people that um, have recruited him. Are we're trying to get him? So it's a little bit of a battle. And in this third episode, they were focusing on the backstory of the female lead, Kara, played by Peyton List, and she. I don't know if she's supposed to be the lead guy's love interest or what, but she's <laughs> she was the lone female that was a member of the Tomorrow People. And so we learned a little bit more. She has a tragic backstory about why she ended up with the gang she's with and why everything is so important to her about him learning to hone his skills, etc. Well, it's a good thing uh, you told me about that because I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it. I've been having a bit of a busy week. Um, Next up, just before you get to your blogs, just a couple of quick things about uh, in well, the Rolling Stone about popular music. Not necessarily exciting, but kind of make you kind of scratch your head and thinking, okay, why? <laughs> so, first one up, Metallica playing Antarctica or want to play Antarctica. I, I don't see the point in that at all. I mean, uh, most people listen know how I feel about Metallica. I'm not going to go into that right now. But point being is they go from being... Well, still making tons of cash, but literally touring the world. And now, eh, we're going to go to Antarctica. Now, usually when people uh, want to play somewhere different, you know, they want to play somewhere that's unexplored, not that Antarctica has, but, you know, you want to do something like Rage Against Machine did, like playing in Cuba, you know, or something like that, something something that's going to catch people's attention. They're like, hey, we're going to Antarctica. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that 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 was my feeling. I kind of I kind of took a double take when I looked at the when I saw the, the head the header in the article. I was like, what, really? And some of the stuff, it just it's especially that it's it's goes almost goes back to the classic scene in uh, Wayne's World when he says when they're going through all the different places. Like, oh, Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. <laughs> so. <laughs> Not really the most exciting uh, place in the world, so that that's uh, pretty much was the first thought through my head. Um, and uh, for those of you who are Calvin Harris fans and Killers fans, Calvin Harris has actually redone the Killer song "When You Were Wrong." So when you were young, sorry, you can pick uh, actually check that online. Actually, it sounds pretty good. Not a huge fan of that scene with Calvin Harris, but it's a good remake. And the last one I was looking at today. Oh, where is it now? Um, Oh yeah, there was a, a pretty much an unearthed old uh, article, or well, interview uh, with uh, Nirvana and Kurt Cobain. So you can check that on Rolling Stone as well. It's interesting, but it's you know it's nothing special. It's a lot of, like a lot of stuff they bring out. No, it hasn't really been unearthed. They've just been holding in to put it out where they can capitalize and make money on it, and so on and so forth. So it's all right, but and, you know it's it's worth the five minutes or so to read it. But it, don't expect anything too interesting and uplifting. So. <laughs> 
All right. Well, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> Thank you. I will probably have fun reading that. <laughs> so, back to you. Uh, your latest blogs, Britt, what have you been working on uh, this past week? Uh, this week I published a review of the Avid Brothers' new album, Magpie and the Dandelion, which I thought was really sensational. They're a folk Americana group from Concord, North Carolina. And they're, I've actually seen them in concert, a very, very talented group of guys. And this album I really enjoyed, and everyone can check out the review on the web, on a cockpit top. And uh, also featured this week, uh, a Dr. Bones' favorite, Dead Sea Navigators, as the spotlight artist this week. Right on. Uh, I did read that, actually. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. No, I, no, I really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I read most of your blogs, Britt, so... I'm shocked when anybody's read it. <laughs> wow, <Sorry>. really? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, wow, someone read it. I can't, I'm constantly shocked. I can't get over it. Um. <laughs> you know, I, I, just, I just I had the same feeling when I started first doing the show. I was like, oh my God, 50 people listening? Holy crap. <laughs> this is amazing, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome. It was such a good feeling to know that you know, either somebody's reading or somebody's listening because, you know, you put a lot of work into it and obviously you enjoy it, but it's nice when uh, you know that other people are enjoying it too and obviously people you don't know are just randomly looking at it and it's so good. I mean, it just keeps on, uh, you, you get nowhere to uh, nowhere to go but up from there, you know, it just little by little. Yes, that's very true. One small step. Yeah. Uh, slowly, but don't call me Shirley, right? So. Very, very true. <laughs> So, um, uh, with your Dead Sea Navigators blog, I really enjoyed it, and I should have thought to queue up one of their songs, because I have a few here that we're going to get to today, and uh, unfortunately this time is not one of them, but I was a little slow on my part, so <laughs> I apologize for that. But, uh, pardon? Oh, I was saying it's alright, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> But one song uh, we're going to get to, and it's a band we've been trying to get to for a few weeks. We've just been had a lot to cover. So we're going to take a quick little break here, and we're going to listen to the Bedroom Hour with X Marks the Spot. <laughs> 